Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So today we've got another review and demonstration on the Devilbus DV-1 base coat gun. So this is actually a re-review. I did review these guns when they were brand new and I've decided to revisit them. So yeah, I, I went back to my Pro Lights for a long time and then when the DV-1 circuit came out, I was saying to Chris from Spray Guns Direct, I said, hey, does it come in a base coat setup? And he said, no, it doesn't. And because I didn't have my DV-1 base coat anymore, I was really hoping to get a DV-1 base. And he said, look, well, I'll just send you out a, a base coat gun as well. You can re-review it and um, yeah, put the bit up on the channel and we can take it from there. So, so the setup I went for was just the standard 1.3 with the B+, which is the base coat air cap on it. So this time I went for the non-digital. So the non-digital comes in at around $700 Australian. Um, that's on Spray Guns Direct website. Now you would be paying shipping on top of that. And the digital comes in at around 835 So I think $135 for the digital, it's not as ludicrous as what it used to be. From memory, you were looking at about an extra sort of $200 back in the day for the, uh, what was it called, DJI Pro Pod. But either way, like it was substantially more expensive. And also the batteries, from memory, like there was a thing with the batteries, if you contacted the builders they would just send out a new pro pod but yeah i've never actually had to change the batteries on a dv1 so hopefully it's not too big of a deal hopefully you can just sort of buy them like you can with the segolas like you can get yourself cheap batteries off ebay i, I did have to change the batteries in my segola 4600 and you're looking at about 15 or 20 dollars you get two batteries and they last for years as well so hopefully that's the same story with the dv1 but i will find that out when my batteries fail and i'll let you guys know but all of that aside they do actually call this gun the olive silver dv1 so as i mentioned before i went for the 1.3 mil this time and it's been spraying the stando blue base coat very well so the gun has got an absolutely massive fan and i've been winding the fan in like half a turn you could go like half a turn to one turn but as you can see they're just doing a bit of a test spray um it's got a very nice big fan which is good for the speed as well um, but especially when you're doing the stando blue you want that um nice even distribution of the metallic to get um, yeah, nice even finish and there's no dead zones in the fans as well Like I've found some guns some of the more cheaper guns you will get sort of like um, like weak fans I guess but there'll be like uh, Areas in the fan pattern where there is just bits of air coming out and it won't actually have the fluid But that's another thing I thought I'd point out is if you look at the gun itself like there's no build-up or very minimal build-up of paint on the air horns there so this is the base coat once it's all dried down so it, it does it's quite crazy the stando blue how how you have to spray it and how it looks when you've just finished spraying and compared to how it looks when it's dry but this job here this is it when it's all cleared up now i did actually clear this with the dv1 circuit from memory so if you'd like to watch me spraying the clear coat on this job you can probably go back and watch that uh, dv1 circuit review and that's another thing I would like to quickly mention. I do get some people asking me, oh, can you swap air caps um, between the DV1 clear and base coat gun? And yes, you definitely can. So you could foreseeably, like if you just wanted um, one gun to rule them all, so to speak, you could just say, get yourself a DV1 base coat gun. Um, that would obviously come with a B plus air cap, which is the base coat air cap. And then you could get yourself a C1 or a C2, which is the clear coat air caps, um, and then, you know, swap that out. And, I mean, they do have, like, identifiers on the fluid tips as well. So the fluid tip will, like, say base coat on them from memory, but it doesn't change your performance. I think it's just... I think when this happened, like when they change over to the DV ones, like they, they wanted to sort of push you in the direction of buying two guns. And as a spray painter, I'm, I'm not really that against it. Cause I mean, we want multiple guns anyway, but I guess I just want to make it clear to those of you who are playing from home, who may want themselves a top of the line gun, like a DV one, but they just can't justify buying the two guns. I guess I just wanted to make it very clear that you can definitely 
use one gun for everything. So as I say, you could even just use the base coat gun for base coat and clear. You could even use the clear coat gun for base coat and clear. You wouldn't even need to change the fluid tip or air cap over. That's totally fine. And if you hang around for a few few more minutes, you're going to actually watch me spraying clear coat through the base coat gun. And totally nothing wrong with that at all. So, yeah, we actually had to wait for... Jeez, it, it felt like about a year before they bought out the clear coat gun with the DV-1. So they, bought, they actually did release this gun, yeah, I think it must have been around a good year earlier than the clear coat gun. So, you know, damned if I wasn't going to put some clear coat through it. So I did that years ago. But then that was actually, um, when these guns first came out, I was still spraying solvent, believe it or not. That's how long ago it was. So if you actually go back and watch my old review, I was still spraying standoff solvent when I first used that gun. And the word I used was effortless. And I'll probably stick with that same word even when using waterborne. Just have a look at the size of that fan, it's massive, it just makes for an effortless paint job. You know, it just lays the base coat down effortlessly. But to be honest, I've found, um, I, I'm yet to find a gun that can't spray stando blue, put it that way. It's more about how you spray it than what you spray it with. And yeah, like uh, all that aside, I would like to say you are best off going for a fast gun with a nice big even fan. So. You might, you might notice that when I'm spraying this, you've kind of got one uniform, clean um, film at the end of it, right? So that base coat is all wet, right? So it's not like most paint systems, say with PPG water, it doesn't matter. If you miss a little bit and you need to scuff a little bit back or something, it's easy to do, it's easy to fix. But with the Stando Blue, you've got to get that one uniform film build. If you find something that you've got wrong, it's gonna sort of be a bit of a nightmare to fix because you end up getting this uh, profiling type thing. Um, now I'm so experienced with this Stando Blue, I never really have any issues with that. But at the start, when you're sort of getting the hang of it and you're like, oh yeah, I'll just dust it a little bit of base coat over there, it kind of ruins the whole job. It screws the whole job up, if you know what I mean. And those who have sprayed this system will know exactly what I mean. But either way, we're on to the clear coat stage, as you can see there. Settings are full fluid, one turn in on the fan, and 29 PSI. So, so as you can see, the clear coat I'm using is the Standox K9600, and that is actually an air dry clear. Again, I have done a specific review on this clear. I'm a big fan of it, and it saves a bit of energy. And yeah, well, when gas is getting so expensive, why not? Now, to be fair, on a big job like this, you're probably cutting even, so, I've found it's the small jobs where you'll sort of save the money because like the clear coat is quite expensive. You're talking around a hundred dollars a litre or maybe even a hundred and twenty dollars a litre, something like that. So yeah, I mean a bake cycle, I think you're looking around fifty or sixty dollars. So a job like this, you're not really going to be making the savings, but it is a premium clear coat that holds a really awesome gloss. And as you can see, we are getting a nice good film build out of it and it is replicating that sort of a chunky um, European type finish which uh, yeah which those BMWs that's what these BMWs are meant to look like I know it doesn't look like very glassy but on the topic of glassy clear wow guys um, recently I did a review on the DV1 circuit edition I was using the 1.3 in that because this shot we do actually spray a lot of European vehicles and I've actually recently been going down to help out a friend of mine in his shop and he's got the PPG and wow like <laughs> I started using the 1.2 because I was spraying this Stinger right a Kia and you know like they're, they're generally a bit flatter like less material but they've got less orange peel in them and damn I tell you what if you thin that PPG 136 clear out properly or well more than what they even recommend and you thin that base coat out and you use the DV1 1.2 for the clear cap so c2 air cap oh amazing guys i'll throw a few pictures in at the end just to show you what i mean but just incredible finishes i've been able to get out of that ppg i'm quite surprised because i've been a bit of a critic of ppg over the years but um if you get it right it's yeah it's definitely a half decent product but 
yeah, all of that side. This gun here, yeah, it gets two big thumbs up from me. I'm glad that I've got it. I was actually spraying the PPG with this gun as well, and it definitely does um, totally fine. So, yeah, it, it had been about a year since I sprayed the PPG. So, with when I spray the PPG, I don't actually have any footage, but I've, I just got myself a little formula that sort of works. So, first coat is around two bar pressure, and like two coat, uh, two turns out on the fluid, and we do three coats. So. Each coat, I drop it by five psi, and I wind the fluid in half a turn. So I start off with the fluid two and a half turns out, and obviously half a turn in each coat. It's a simple formula for me to follow, and it produces, um, yeah, nice replicatable, if that's even a word, results. I know what I'm gonna get out of it when I do it every single time. So yeah, it's definitely not quite as nice as the Stando Blue Base Coat. I do like getting in there and just smashing the Stando Blue Base Coat on nice and quickly. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I guess one upside of the PPG Base is that it doesn't take as long to dry between each coat and it doesn't take, so like once you do finally get all your, your coats of Base Coat down, which yes, it does take a bit longer, like because that last coat's gone on so dry, it really doesn't take much time at all for that last coat to dry, especially if you've got the booth up to 30. By the time you've cleaned your gun out, mixed up your clear, you're basically right to go. And yeah, either way, I'll be doing a few vids uh, back on the PPG again soon, but this is the Sando Blue, and isn't that a nice, wonderful looking OEM sort of uh, finish? So yeah, it's a BMW X6, and um, yeah that's the, like factory as you know there's a couple of nibs in it but nothing major you know you're not left with heaps like i've always been told and i agree with it i used to work who say hey i'd rather one or two big ones than a hundred little ones so there is like one or two chunks in that chunk is in that bonnet there's like one up there in the middle like right in the middle of, and up towards the back end of the bonnet but apart from that there's not really a great deal in there to polish but i guess that's about it guys if you did like this review be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you would like to get one there will be a link in the description as i say 700 aussie dollars for the base coat gun here and that's non-digital if you wanted to get the digital it's about 830 at current conversion rates so that supports the show as well so spray guns direct did send it out thanks to them and yeah go over to spray guns direct website and get yourself one if you'd like to support the show alternately you can just yeah hit thumbs up subscribe to the channel uh follow all my social media and buy some merchandise anyway until next time get out there and paint some shit coming out